My okay, English we're father. We're going to get started with said, our meeting so that uh, our speaker can speak and we can yes. actually get out of here. Yes, yes. Uh, we have uh, today speaking with our own R. Snyder, who has yes. uh, been a member of 195 for a while. He's a B-29 pilot uh, involved in Korea. He's also uh, involved in the CIA, flying some missions for them as well. And he's here to talk about the earthquake Magoon, who he knew, who was also CIA pilot as well. Could we move in? Yes. All right. Move in. You have the phone. Oh. We ready? Yep. Yep. Floor is yours. <coughs> okay, thank you. I'll start off with a military joke. Old sergeant was sitting in a meeting, had all his ribbons on looked like he'd been through a lot of combat. This pretty young girl, very patriotic, was looking at him and feel sorry for him. He looked like he was downcast. So she came up to him and asked, what's wrong, Sarge? He said, nothing, I'm fine. He said, you don't look so well. Said, when was the last time you had sex? He said, 1950. <laughs> she said, oh, that's your problem. She said, maybe I can take care of that. She said, let's go to the room. They come back out, and she said, Sarge, so long since you had sex, I can't believe how good you are. He says, it wasn't that long ago. She said, 1950. He said, it's only 2150 now. It's time. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that before somewhere. <laughs> Hour and, and dollars a day once a month. <laughs> hour three months ago, asked, asked me if I could give a talk about Earthquake Magoon. I hadn't thought about it, but Earthquake is from Elizabeth, New Jersey. He's an ace. He destroyed nine zeros. He was shot down, taken prisoner by the Chinese communists. Back in those days, prisoners were a pain in the neck. They just shot them. Prisoners need food, take care of 24 hours a day. They're trying to figure out how to escape. The best thing you do is just shoot them. But somehow, earthquake after six months, they let them loose. He came back into combat. Earthquake, how did he get his name? 1940, everyone read Little Abner. Little Abner is the best cartoon there was. He's not only a cartoonist, he is satirist. <coughs> he would always spoof our society about something. I liked him so well, I bought a book every cartoon he ever made. <laughs> Bill Abner was a character he lived with in Kentucky, the hillbilly. He lived with Mama and Papa Yoakum, <clears throat> and the entire town of Dorpatch was in poverty. And the only thing that they could grow, the ground was so bad, was turnips. Raise your hand, how many people know what a turnip looks like? <laughs> how many people have ever eaten a turnip? <laughs> More than I thought. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but little Abner had a job. He was a mattress tester. He would have to sleep for eight hours on a mattress and then tell if it was comfortable or not. If there are hard days work, He'd come home, his mother would make him a big pork chop dinner, and he'd go to bed. He was big, he was handsome, didn't have a brain in his head. Absolutely <laughs> stupid. Daisy May was the most oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Daisy May was the most beautiful girl in town. Every guy wanted to date Daisy May, and she had a tremendous build. And it meant nothing to him at all. Every other guy wanted to date her, he wouldn't do it. Sadie Hawkins 
was the most ugly person on earth, <laughs> and her father wanted to get her married off. <laughs> so they would have Katie Hawk and Dave Racing. <laughs> the rules were that if a girl caught a guy, he'd have to get married. <laughs> and and uh, everybody was hoping that Daisy May would catch him, except Lil Abner, and she never could catch him. Uh, Earthquake Magoon was big, very big. He loved to eat and drink and chase women. <laughs> Guess he's around. Um, Jimmy McGovern was big, over six feet. He weighed 260 pounds. And the only difference between him and Earthquake was that he would fly a plane. He, he liked women, he liked drinking and partying. So he first assumed the name of Earthquake. Everyone called him. In 1941, China was in trouble. Chiang Kai-shek had a lot of ground troops, but no ground troops, no, no, no uh, planes or flying capabilities. Japanese were trying to conquer the country. Chinese communists were trying to pass. So, Chiang Kai-shek hired General Chennault to create an air force. And that's 41, he, he formed the Flying Tigers, and they flew the P-40, <coughs> P-40 called the Warthog. It wasn't a great plane. One virtue, it cost $40,000 very, very cheap to make. The, supposedly the F-28 was a lot better airplane, but it cost twice as much to make. But anyway, they had a lot of the This is what the, F, the uh, P-40 looked like. We're all familiar with the Tiger. Uh, but they could not compete with the Zero. A lot has been written about the uh, Flying Tigers, but they really were not very effective in this way. So in 43, General Chenault closed down the Flying Tigers. People think that Earthquake Magoon was a Flying Tiger. Technically, he was not. They closed them down in 43, and he started the flying sharks. <coughs> the sharks followed General Chenault, and they had the P-51 Mustang. Mm -hmm. And the Mustang was certainly the equivalent of the Zeros. So even though Flying Tigers got the credit, really the flying sharks were a lot better. Earthquake destroyed nine zeros. He was shot down, taken prisoner. He was held by the Chinese for six months. He escaped without getting shot and came back to fly. He, a couple things about him. He, uh, one time, won a clutch of Chinese girls, 18 to 20 years old, in a card game. And he didn't do what he wanted with. And it, I think I know what he did. But <laughs> in time, he, he released them. <laughs> the war ended. <clears throat> oh, one other mission. He did have a heart. He was flying a plane load, C-46, of Japanese prisoners where they're going to be executed. <coughs> he developed engine trouble. He landed. All the Japanese prisoners escaped. And he was able to fix the plane and take back off. 
you know, we did have a soft spot in his heart. What? Yeah. Yeah. He, uh, when the war ended, 1945, a new airline was formed in Canada, in, in, uh, in China. China, yeah. It was called the Civil Air Transport CAC. It was all the old pilots from the, the Flying Tigers and the Flying Sharks became <coughs> pilots in CAC. They flew C-46s and C-47s on cargo missions and passenger missions throughout, throughout China. I first met earthquake probably in 1952 in Hong Kong. He, every bar knew him there. Every restaurant knew earthquake. <laughs> and, and I met him in, of course, I was from Cranford. He was from Elizabeth. And we got to be pretty friendly at the time. Now, what was I doing there? I'm going to give a, a brief description of the military background. 1950, A1 in a draft, about to be drafted. I took some competitive tests for the Navy and the Air Force, both offered a commission. I took a commission in the Air Force, called the active duty. That was June of 1950. I was a base salvage officer at Maxwell Air Force Base, safer than a housewife. Korean War started in 1950, in July, and it proved how stupid I am. I had to get in combat. And the only way you can get in combat is to be a pilot. You know, I applied for flight training, passed all the tests, the eye tests, and everything else. Went off to Waco, Texas, started. T6s. After primary, went to Randolph B25s. If you remember, the B25 is what Jimmy Doolittle flew off the Hornet, 16 of them, the bomb torpedo. It was not very effective as far as damage, but it had a tremendous psychological advantage <coughs> because Japanese people thought they were could not be penetrated. Here's these stupid B 25 obsolete plane, had no trouble coming in and bomb. It had a tremendous psychological effect on them. I finished my, I left my left ear in B 25 incidentally. It's the, it's the noisiest plane you've ever been in. Got my wings, we started with 20 in flight training, 12 of us got wings. Off to Langley, Virginia, B-26, that's the Widowmaker, killed a lot of people. It's a tremendous combat plane, also very difficult to make fly. And the Air Force with the wisdom, B-25, very forgiving, very easy to fly, had two pilots, B-26 and one. <laughs> Finished my B-26 training off to Travis in San Diego, or San Francisco, and I'm going to fly a B-26 to Korea. The range of the B-26 normally is about 1,400 miles, and Hawaii was 2,000 miles. Dickham. So we, the whole bomb bay was filled with gasoline fuel so we could make it. Got to Hawaii, Dickham. The next stop was a place called Johnston, which I never heard of, and I can't find it now. But Johnston, I think it was made during World War II, and the only thing on it was a runway. The next stop was Guam Wake, Okinawa, K-9, Korea. I'm in the 17th Air Force, 95th Squadron, and our job is pretty simple. We 
we fly at night and kill anything that moves. He had eight of us, a barrack had eight people in it, and eight beds and a kerosene stove. They were shacks better than a foxhole, but not much better. <coughs> we had eight beds, each to four crews of pilots and, and navigators. And when we arrived, we got the best two beds in the shack. And in a couple of days trying to figure out why we got them. We found out three days later that the pilot and the navigator that was there took a one-way trip. didn't come back from the mission. Uh, actually, there was, we lost overall 150 B-26s, one way trips every way. We would fly at night, bit of cold, 50 missions for the tour. The B-26 had 14 forward firing 50s, rockets, napalm, and 6,000 pounds of bomb. We would fly up north and we look for trains, we look for convoy, troop concentrations, and we'd fly about 500 feet off the ground. And anything we saw, anything that moved, we destroyed. A tour was 50 missions. If I had completed the 50, I went over in September of 51. If I had completed my 50 missions, I would have been back in maybe February or March of 52. But they pulled a trick on me after 38 missions. They sent me down to Clark Air Force Base, a brand new wing being formed, 581st. Army supply and communication, a total misnomer. We were a CIA wing engaged in psychological warfare, which is a violation of the Geneva Convention, which makes us war criminals. We had all types of planes, but I learned to fly the B-29, and uh, we had a lot of different uses for the B-29, even before we went to Korea. For instance, I spent three months at Formosa, now called Taiwan, flying for Gen General Chiang Kai-shek, actually his son, Tiger Wong. So I spent three months bombing mission on Formosa, and they treated us like kings there when we were in flying mission. Actually, I was dating a Chinese girl, a pretty girl, who had graduated from Smith College in Massachusetts. Very nice girl. She gave us a big party after we left. Then we went up to Thailand, did a lot of bombing in Thailand. Why, I don't know. Went down to Australia. They had the crazy idea that we were going to fly low-level missions in B-29s at night in Korea. There's not a flat engine in Korea that wouldn't last a mission. But we flew so low, it was really perfectly flat. I actually had some leaves embedded in the plane when went back from, from flying. They gave up on that. And January the 11th, 1953, four of us are going up to Yokota, four planes to start flying missions in Korea. On the way up, we all tuned into Tokyo and uh, uh, Korean Katy. Korean Katy, psychological warfare, knew more about our wing than we did. And we listened, she said, to Colonel Arnold, the wing commander. And four planes are coming up to Dakota to start combat missions, psychological warfare, their CIA, in violation of the Geneva Convention. We get up there the night of the 11th, night of the 12th, Colonel Arnold, 
loaded the plane. 13 people went off on the first mission and shot them down. We lost our wing commander in all the top of the very first mission. Uh, I flew four nights later. You don't want to check my underwear. <laughs> But you know, it was outside of anti aircraft, what that meant. I had 10 combat missions and B 29s, psychological warfare uh, missions that we really don't talk about what we did. Came, came back, came back to Clark after the 10 missions. The Korean War ended. July of 53. Now the 581st has to find some more war to fight, naturally. So, getting us ready to go up and fly for the French, French Indochina. That's when they recruited Earthquake and about 12 other pilots from CAC and came down July or August. Clark, learn how to fly the C-119 in November of 53, we went up to French Indochina to start flying for the French. I was not with Earthquake there. He flew out of Cat Bai Airport. I flew out of Da Nang. My missions were basically the same as they had in Korea. April, May the 6th, 1954, the French were just about to collapse, they were finished. Earthquake was flying a piece of the C-119. His job was to drop howitzers into French that were trapped. On the way in, he got the support engine, took a direct hit, and he wasn't going to make it. So, Earthquake turned around and headed to try to get to Laos so he wouldn't be taken prisoner, which was 75 miles away. Right at the border, he announced there's a beach, a C-119 following him. And he said to them, looks like this is it, boy, to the plane behind him, and crashed. Got killed. But I didn't know, you can't, you can't land, and it had a wheels up landing with a C-119 and survive. They just break up, and you go, go, you'll get killed. In contrast, B-26 in Korea, I had, a wheel, I had my landing gear shot out, no landing gear. I landed, 326. They had it back in the air in a week. We had so little damage to it. But earthquake got killed on the 6th of... And as the CIA always does, he died in a routine training accident. They, they are all, everyone in the CIA, if they get killed, it's a routine training. Many attempts were made to find his DNA. Finally, in 2007, but evidently they have sophisticated DNA. Now they found his remains. Wally Bolford, his co-pilot, C-119, was a real hero in Korea. He uh, had two distinguished flying crosses. Two purple parts, he was a co pilot, Wally Beaufort. They never found any trace of him. So, 2007, the remains of Earthquake came back. The family had moved from Elizabeth to Basking Ridge. His brother was buried there in 2002. Some people want to bury him next to his brother. Other people want him buried at 
Arlington National Cemetery. And they had a big family fight that went on for months. Finally, the decision was that they would have, he would have a final reunion with all of his flying tiger pilots at Arlington and be buried there. Very, very impressive ceremony. They had a black horse, a black carriage. They had his casket on the carriage, an American flag over it. They probably had 50, <coughs> 50 enlisted people in dress uniforms marching and then a long train behind them. They buried them and that's the end of Jimmy's life. Any comments? The wheels, what? The wheels couldn't come down <coughs> the transport train, the plane. The, 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 the C-119, the wheels couldn't come down. They were shot off. They were shot off when he got hit. Oh, yeah. yeah. <coughs> Art, which 26 were you flying? The old model or the one? Or the Invader. The, the Invader? Yeah. Okay. No. No. Actually, 846. What? Actually, 846. Yeah. 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 How many hours do you have? Thank our speaker for his service. Very very impressive. Impressive. Thank you, Art. Thank yeah, you, Art. That was really good. That was really good. That was really good. Really good. You're lucky. When I speak like this, I forget half of what I want to say. <laughs> you, know, uh, you remember it? You can start over again. <laughs> uh, I just want to say, I like, were amazing. The dates you had down to the deck. Oh, yeah. You must have kept a diary. What? Did you keep a diary of things? Never wrote a note in my life. Right up there. Yeah. That's amazing. I'll never have I, I talked to Art about uh, possibly um, submitting an uh, earthquake uh, for a um, induction into the New Jersey Aviation Hall of Fame. With your help, I, I can try and do that. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Asked that before. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I'll, Good. I'll uh, submit it and uh, see what happens. And, uh, I'm sure I'm the only person left alive with know him, you know, because he died yeah. 63 years ago. How old was he? He, uh, he was 32. Did he have children? Never married. Oh. No. Okay. He, uh, Not that you know. A couple yeah. of things. No. He sure was a, a wild man. He, when he was down and Clark with us, in short order, every bar in, in uh, Manila and Angeles knew him. And uh, within two weeks, he had a mestizo girlfriend. The mestizo is half Philippine and half Caucasian. And uh, seems to be out the prettiest of each in no time. And one disgusting thing. Balutes. A balut is a delicacy in the Philippines. They just love eating them. It takes 28 days for a duck to hatch. A balut is 21 days fully formed in the shell. And we would be sitting in a bar going through town you hear balloons, balloons, and a Filipino with money would run out and buy a balloon. And we used to bet on what American they could eat a balloon. Every $10 bet I made, I lost. I just couldn't eat one. Earthquake was the only guy I ever met that could eat one. He'd take one, take a bet, put it in a glass of beer, and right? <laughs> oh, 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 oh. well, it wasn't the volume, it was the taste. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Art, Art, when you had conversations with Earthquake, what, 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 what was the conversation like? Flying. Or uh, women. Oh, <laughs> boy, <laughs> yeah, flying or women. As yeah. far as his children go, there probably were a lot. What? <laughs> yeah. Typical GI talk. A real bon voyant, if you ever heard one. So, Do you know if he was honored with a star at the CIA? He wasn't. No, well, to start with, 
everything I told you from August of 53 is probably not true. Because, because from August till now, the United States has never admitted that we flew for the French. The French have written a lot about it, but the United States to this day say that we were not there. I applied for all the ribbons that you would have gotten in, if you flew in Vietnam, and I sent my copy of my letters sending me up to the Da Nang, and they simply wrote back, and I was never there. So everything from August on may not have happened. Something like Mission Impossible. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure all the records are. You have a very good imagination. What? Yeah. They did. See, I had a big fire. No, the, the, the records uh, in Denver. Yeah. Yeah, they had a big fire. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there a lot of CIA, a lot of CIA activities. Yeah. They keep no records, and you know, <coughs> whatever they do, they try and burn. So it's hard right. to tell what, what goes on. Secret organization. But anyway, thank you for uh, again for your service, yeah. risking your life, and uh, kind of being recognized for it by our government. But, you know, What's that? <coughs> thank you for your service, and uh, even though you're not recognized by your government, we appreciate it. Oh. Yes. Uh, we're we're going to give them a little token. Yes. Uh, Actually, the token is back there. I guess. We'll against the flag maybe yeah sure sure okay let me just stop the video okay